Okay, so we are going to go on the record in the matter of Royal Woods Townhomes versus Marquia Stevenson, all occupants, 222177. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Cheryl Lockhart on behalf of the plaintiff. All right, thank you. And um, the court will note that Ms. Stevenson is not present. This court ordered Ms. Stevenson to be here at 1.30. It is now 2.20, and we haven't taken a break from our morning docket. And the court will note that at one point, Ms. Stevenson had uh, her name appeared up here on the court Zoom. Uh, and before the court could admit her, because I was uh, on the record with some other matters, and before the court could admit Ms. Stevenson, she was no longer on Zoom. And given her behavior at the last court date on um, May 5th, I was not going to admit her into the Zoom while I was on the record with another matter. So. We will proceed without Ms. Stevenson at this point. Um, the court will note that Ms. Stevenson claimed she filed bankruptcy. The court confirmed uh, via Ms. Luckoff as well that there was a bankruptcy case filed. It was a what is called a skeletal bankruptcy petition, which means that the bare minimum that needed to be filed was filed and that there were two weeks then to file the balance of what was required. If that was not filed, then it would be dismissed. If it was filed, then it would not be dismissed. And then the court would have to follow the automatic stay from the date that the um, bankruptcy was filed. And so the court um, is just making sure the record is clear that the reason everybody was coming back today was number one, the court wanted to confirm that the balance of the documents that needed to be filed for the bankruptcy were filed. And then the court will proceed accordingly. So Ms. Luckoff, what would be able to look on the bankruptcy? Yes, first and foremost, Your Honor, I mean, the defendant was ordered to be here, she's not here. I, her conduct that time, I don't have to tell the court it was inappropriate at best. Um, so I don't know what the remedy is for that, but I did look up as of yesterday, she had not filed anything, but today I did see that she had filed some schedules. So it was not dismissed. Um, I would like to point out to the court that on her actual petition and number 11, where it says, do you rent your residence? She answers no. So I would argue and you have to be careful here because obviously I don't want to violate the automatic stay, but one would argue perhaps, you know, this bankruptcy does not prevent the landlord from moving forward. Um, I would like the record to reflect that she did contact my client today and inform my client she was not appearing today because she was turning in her keys on Friday um, or whatever that is worth. I did want to share that with the court. Um, I can pull up what I found. I mean, there were some schedules that were submitted. Um, and take a look at that. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. There's other things in here, but it's all expensive. I believe it's the second page at the bottom, number eleven. Do you know what Do you know what happened with the 2015 case or the 2019 case? Well, I, I know the only thing I know about was the one that she just had the 2022 case. I don't know about. It. Okay. Well, this wasn't even just what the court's going to look. Read this right here. Do you rent your residence? No. And if yes was checked, then it would, the next question was, has your landlord obtained an eviction judgment against you? <coughs> then no, go to line 12. Yes, fill out initial statement about an eviction judgment against you and file it with a bankruptcy petition. Okay, what is it that, um, that shows it was filed yesterday? So today, no, it was supposed to be in yesterday, but today it says a summary of assets and liabilities, schedules A through J. I mean, I'm happy to provide this to the court to look at if you want to see the list of everything she filed. Um, um, okay, I can look yeah. at that. However, she, oh, that was off of then. Filed today. Yeah, financial affairs. 
Schedules A through J, summary of assets and liabilities. Declaration on individual debtor schedule. Let's see. That April 30th, there's 14 days. Let's This appears to be the 16th day, right? But the information I have reviewed would was was 14 it? days. Yeah. So I don't. So here's here's where you're correct. Um, I want to make sure that the bankruptcy say isn't violated, and perhaps this is going to get dismissed because it was filed late. And this, I mean the. Bankruptcy filing. Right. Because since it's all online filing, perhaps it didn't um, it didn't flag. I don't know. Right. Um, but because bankruptcy was filed, then that triggered the automatic stay because there was only one other case filed within the previous 12 months. Had there been two cases filed within the previous 12 months, then um, then there would not, um, there would have had to have been a motion to extend the automatic stay. So the court will note that Ms. Stevenson is not present. And so counsel, we can do one of two things. Um, I want to keep a tight time schedule on this. I don't want it to just go off, nor has there been any um, anything submitted by Ms. Stevenson regarding a stay that's filed here with the court, um, but the court's aware that by law, she gets that 30 day automatic stay because she um, did not have more than one bankruptcy filed in the last 12 months. So she, um, we can set this for the afternoon on May 24th, if you'd like, um, or 23rd. And you can appear by Zoom. I'm not going to have you come all the way down here if she didn't show up today. I just, because I'd ordered everybody in person, um, I had you come down today. Or we can, um, adjourn this to, to nine. No, 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 no. I know that I'm just, I'm just, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the days in the docket and where the 30 day, right, uh, right. stay falls. Right. Um, and we don't have a docket on the second. I mean, I could, I could do June seventh in the afternoon, but I mean, then we're jumped into another month. Right. She has um, I know. I, I'm aware. Uh, I recall that. So uh, we can do May thirty first. That's the day after the thirty day stay. Would technically be done, and we would know if she's moved out of the property. Um. Would the court um, issue some type of show clause against her? Ms. Phil to appear today. She was ordered to appear in person. She just completely disregards. She was ordered to appear in person. I could do a show cause. We could set it for the 31st. I mean, I have to give her the notice. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Let me. So we will issue this as a show, we'll issue a show cause why she should not be held in contempt of court. We'll set this for a hearing May 31st at 1.30. That will be in person. Okay. Um, and then we will also adjourn this matter to May 31st. At 1.30 as well. If for some reason this, this bankruptcy is dismissed, and I determined like if tomorrow it shows a dismissal, which I don't know if it is. Uh, we can do an earlier date on the other tenant matter, but I can't yes. move up yes. the show pause because I still need to get further notice. Understood. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. All right. Have a good day. We're going to be off the record. Okay. Number 56, People versus Robert Winburn, 17654 FC. Hi, Mr. Winburn, can you hear me okay? I can, Your Honor. Can you Great. hear me? 
I can. Thank you. Awesome. Um, great. I love it when technology works. Okay. So, <laughs> right. So we are here today, uh, Mr. Winburn. Um, is my understanding that your last council um, that has been signed to terminate? We have a couple of things right now. You remain unrepresented, and I'm going to go over for Miss Ann Barry as a new prosecutor to this case. So I'm just going to read her a little bit of the procedural history so that she's caught up to speed. Okay, Mr. Winburn. Excellent. Thank you, Your Honor. Sure. In this matter. Um, Mr. Winburn, and please correct me, Mr. Winburn, if I'm wrong, do you still wish to represent yourself? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Um, this matter has been bound over to circuit court, um, and it was bound over quite some time ago on September 8th of 2017. Mr. Winburn has been appointed 11 attorneys, including the Livingston County Public Defender's Office, the Jackson County Public Defender's Office. Some of the attorneys that were appointed to rent Mr. Winburn were appointed, others were appointed as standby counsel only. Mr. Uh, Winburn has represented himself on several occasions during this time frame, um, including at a time where there was a mistrial, which was November 26th of 2018. Um, and that's when a mistrial had been declared. Um, at that time, the presiding judge was Judge O'Brien. Um, And she reported that she had serious concerns about allowing Mr. Winburn to represent himself um, as she felt he would be disruptive and the court would be unduly convenient and the burden and the burden to the court and the administration of court's business. Um, as stated in People v. Camerad, which is 307 Mishap 98 214, in general, a defendant can forfeit his right to represent himself, quoting Allen v. Commonwealth, which is 410 um, Southwest 3rd. 125 at 134 in 2013. The court also notes that Mr. Winburn has filed 165 motions since this case was found over. Um, and Ms. Indiri kind of going through, um, I've had the opportunity to now review um, the motions that were made, the orders from the previous judge, um, including reviewing some of the video of prior uh, proceedings. Um, I will note that there were a lot of inappropriate comments made by Mr. Winburn during his opening statement, including vouching for witness credibility, alleging discovery violations when the court had determined that no discovery or Brady violations had occurred, um, exceeding the scope of the pretrial orders. Uh, the court relinquished um, um, his right to stand by himself and ordered standby counsel for Mr. Winburn um, at one point in the record, which was concerning to, um, I believe, Judge O'Brien, but certainly concerning to me after reviewing it, Mr. Winburn was upset and um, made some threats to the standby counsel. Uh, when Mr. Winburn corrected himself, he said that he meant that her career was in danger either way. I believe that was inappropriate. It's the court understanding that the local um, indigent criminal defense system of appointing people needs more time to locate appropriate counsel for Mr. Winburn. Um, now that he's not represented, Ms. Andere, you'll have to respond to those motions. So I'm awaiting a response from Ms. Andere as to the outstanding motions. But what I want to do today is to adjourn the court state to allow our local indigent criminal defense system to see if we can locate um, an attorney to at least serve as standby counsel for Mr. Winburn. And Your Honor, I will note that my colleague who had previously had this had, I believe, drafted responses to either all the motions or some of the motions. Um, the reason why they had not been served yet is because of what our understanding was that there was it was pending an appointment of counsel. Point. Right. And so we did not want to be communicating with a represented individual. But if the court is noting what, what you yeah. are right now, then we will look at that. We'll follow up on that. Thank okay. you. We are still pending. Um, pending that attorney. We don't have anyone who's agreed to say yes right now. So Mr. Winburn um, can receive your responses um, at his current location. Mr. Winburn, sir. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, so yeah, that's uh, at the, our last hearing on March 27th, uh, Your Honor, you had did indicate you told the prosecutor and you listed off all my motions that you wanted a response to. Um, and, I, and, and I'm glad that you may have had the time to familiarize yourself. These are very serious issues. And um, that's really what's been causing the problem with the breakdown in attorney-client relationship. And um, 
I'm just I'm appealing to this court. Your Honor, I've been in here for seven years as a pretrial detainee. I'm a criminal justice crusader. As this is what this has turned me into because this case magnifies the injustice with the public defender's office. And I think that I could adequately represent myself. I've shown that um, repeatedly. And um, and in and, and my motions, there's a, you know, a speedy trial violation. Um, there's the 180 day rule violation. And um, I would ask this court today, Your Honor, delays that it's been seven years of delays. And um, I was a law clerk for James Lawrence, J Attorney James Sterling Lawrence, uh, I, uh, Bas uh, Judge Sa uh, Saad from uh, Bazi Saad. Uh, I, uh, I can handle myself and I don't, I, we're just gonna, no attorneys are ever gonna defend me. And if you let me speak for my, my, on my behalf, my motions speak for themselves. The prosecutors have a lot of explaining to do with regard to the withholding the evidence, Your Honor. And that's what this I, whole thing. Um, I hear you, Mr. Winburn, but we're not we're not going to be arguing the motions today. I do want to hear a response from the people. Um, uh -huh. And and I want the local defense system to try to come up with standby counsel for you, because as you know from your previous case that ended in a mistrial, you're held to the same standards as anyone who has been practicing for a number of years, has a law degree and is a licensed practitioner. And because this case is very serious, if you have a question in the middle of trial, you need to be able to ask someone. Ms. Ambieri and I are not going to be able to answer those questions for you should that come to pass. So at the very least, you're going to have to have standby counsel, and I think that's appropriate going forward, especially in arguing the motions, because these are very serious um, motions and serious matters of law that you um, prosecute up in front of the court. So I want to make sure that you have all the defense available to you that you are entitled to under the law. Excellent. So we're going to, um, is there something else, Mr. Winburn? I just wanted to add that um, there is a brand new case that also came out, People versus Vagoski from the Michigan Court of Appeals. V-A-G-A-S-K-Y, and it's 2023 MISHAP, okay. Lexis, uh, and that's 2901. That was decided, decided April 25th, 2023. But this really affirms my bad faith argument. When you look at the totality of all of this favorable exculpatory evidence that's been destroyed or tampered with or manufactured, um, this would warrant dismissal. And uh, th this is fresh from the Michigan Court of Appeals, and it really okay. falls in line on the bad faith component. And um, I'm, I, I, I ask the court, please review the record. I don't know if did the court get my latest motion, because this is kind of a direct challenge, the complaint for declaratory judgment and hearing under uh, MCR 2.605, where I, is, I'm actually asking for a declaratory ruling. Uh, it's, if it was okay, no I don't think that one's... I'm not sure that that one actually came in yet. I think I have four other ones that are pending. I don't think that one's made that way to my desk yet. But in either event, so that one, did you send all of those motions to the prosecutor's office as well? Yes, I did. I always prosecute okay, the prosecutor. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Ms. You could get the and order them to respond to all my motions, Your Honor. And um, give me. We're going to respond to all of the motions that have not previously been decided. So we're not going back into time to right. do ones where there's ruling, but I believe there are four, and I believe that one you just mentioned would be, I think, five. Um, and I can go back that the prosecutor, if you don't have a response to that, or there's not a previous order on it from the previous judge, you'll be ordered to respond to those. Um, that'll be June 26th at 2023. Actually, you know what? This is probably, you might need to set this up a separate day. I just thought about that. Ms. Andiri, I'd like to set this on a separate day. I don't know if it's appropriate to have oral arguments on all of these motions potentially during a docket. I think that's probably unwise for everyone else who's attending the docket. So it, can we go into July? Yeah, let's, um, Mr. Winburn, I'm going to give you a special hearing time because I don't want to do this during the docket if it takes longer than it should, you know? Uh -huh. Okay, let me take a look. Your Honor, I'm not raising no frivolous arguments, and the and and as you know, Judge O'Brien had to recuse herself for judicial bias, and the Judicial Tenure Commission are now investigating the knowing use of perjured testimony in this case. I just got okay. confirmation from them. Well, that that 
doesn't have any bearing as to when we're setting your date. So hold on, Mr. Winburn. I just want to make sure that we have a uh, holy smokes venture, venture, venture out. What's that, Jerry, on the 17th? Is that unlikely to be? Yes. Oh. Uh, have the domestic motions on. My health is really bad, Your Honor. I don't. And, and the more I, the more I sit. Do it three. Miss Ann Derry, can you do the nineteenth at three? Of what? July nineteenth at three o'clock. Maybe yeah. after my domestic docket. At three o'clock, you said. Yeah. So Wednesday. I think that should be fine. Okay. All right. We're gonna set this for a special date and time. So this will be July. What was it? 19th? 19th. July 19th, and we're going to do it at 3 p.m. Will I be hearing from a lawyer? Because nobody ever contacts me. I yeah, never get and, no court orders. Yes, and hopefully, um, Mr. Winburn, you will. Um, we're working with our our local provider here that does indigent defense right now. We just haven't found anyone who has the bandwidth to take your case. And so, there, I, from what I understand, um, my judicial attorney was advised that there was uh, somebody who was just completing a murder trial and is going to get back to them very soon um, as to their availability. So um, they have a good lead for right now, but they'll be letting you know. So July 19th at 3 p.m. And uh, Miss Andieri, the order would be for you to serve on Mr. Winburn your response by paper copy. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and we will do that until there. Yeah. Until until there, there, unless there's an attorney present. Until there's an attorney present. And when you'll both get an order if the, when, if and when the attorney is, and then those responses will shift back to the attorney. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. We'll see you then, Mr. Winburn. Yeah, but at this point, Your Honor, I will get a copy. She's going to serve me uh, with the order. She's so going right. to serve you until an attorney is um, okay, appointed for you. Prepare a, re a reply to that. Um, and I okay. can do that swift. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Winburn. Your Honor, thank you for your patience. Sure, no problem.